This is an atomic structure question. It's eight marks in four parts. Work your way through A, B, C, and D, and then review your answers once you've tried them. Here's A, here's B and C, and finally here's D. So for A, relatively straightforward mass spec calculation, we've got the MZ values, we've got the abundances, so we put those in, we're dividing by 100 because we're dealing with percentages, always double check that, sometimes it's not percentages and you'll divide by a different number. Now once you've done that, you get to a relative atomic mass of 47.8. It's to one decimal place. You don't want to lose a mark after doing all of the hard work and are missing out because you've just not paid attention to the detail. Moving on to B, and we want the equation for the ionization of titanium. So we have titanium atoms becoming titanium ions, and that happens by losing electrons. Remember, in electron impact, you fire high energy electrons at your sample but they knock electrons off your sample. So the ions will always be positive and they will usually be plus one. In terms of the MZ value, we need to remember in the acceleration phase, all of the ions are accelerated to have the same kinetic energy. So it's going to be the smaller particles that move faster and therefore reach the detector first. And that's why we have the MZ value of 46. I'm just showing you there that titanium is gaseous, as I've said, because it's vaporized. We move on and we take a look at C, and we have got here 49 grams for one mole. If we divide that by Avogadro's number, that would tell us the mass of one atom in grams but we want it in kilograms. So we need to incorporate that into our calculation. So it's not 49 over Avogadro, it's 49 over 1,000 over Avogadro. And that takes you to your value of 8.137 by 10 to the minus 26. Now, when we move on to the calculation, these are relatively common questions now. You'll be provided with the equation that you can see here. You might need to rearrange it, and you will have to do that here, actually. But there's lots of data that you can then try to fit in and see where the gaps are. Now, when you look at the titanium-49, where we have been given the time of flight, we've got the kinetic energy, the one thing that we're missing, and we've just calculated the mass, so the one thing we're missing is the distance, the length of the flight tube. So we rearrange to make D the subject. Now, once I've done that, I can put my figures in, and I've colour-coded so you can see where they come from. Um, I've put in for the mass that we calculated that as part C of this question. Now, that allows us to get to a flight tube being 1.547 metres long. If you then consider that that flight tube is the same for the titanium-47, and the kinetic energy is the same, we can start to piece this together. So I look at my titanium-47 iron. First thing I'm going to do is take my distance of 1.547 meters, and you can see that I'm building the equation up. So T equals D, and I'm about to put the rest of the information in. So I can put in on the bottom line, two multiplied by kinetic energy. All that's left is the mass, but I can work out the mass for the titanium 47. And if I show the working out there, you can see the value that then goes in, once I've got all of that in place, I can work out the time. And it comes to 9.614 by 10 to the minus 7 seconds. Now, there are quicker ways of doing that, where you can simply look for what's the same. You can, you can simplify it. And you will see that on some examples of the videos that I do. But I think it's important to try to see exactly where these numbers are coming from. And that's why I've done it in such a long and detailed way on this occasion.